And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at the 20th anniversary jumbo edition of Big City. It's hard to believe that Big City is 20 years old. Well, actually, 21 years old at this point. It's hard to believe that, and what's harder to believe is that nowadays, with so many games that come with miniatures, Big City really caused a stir when it first came out, because inside it were all these plastic city miniatures. I mean, it was essentially, it's a tile laying game. It didn't need big miniatures, but it was really cool. Plastic city pieces. It was fantastic. It was really unlike any other Euro game at the time, and there hasn't been many since. And so we fully expected to have a game that also comes with big plastic miniatures. And this is the Jumbo Edition. This was kickstarted from Mercury Games, and I managed to get my hands on a copy. I really like the original design. Uh, sadly, the designer passed away several years ago, um, but the game lives on, and this is probably my favorite game of the ones that he made. Let's take a look at it. At the beginning of the game, you're going to start with board one, which has numbers from 11 to 19. And then you'll start with boards two, three, four, possibly five, depending on the number of players. Players are going to put these boards out. You're going to take turns putting them out because at the beginning of the game, you're going to draw a card. There's only one card for every property in the game. So like, for example, here I drew the 11 and the 28. And so I might want the build the things to look this way because the 11's next to the 28. And that will help me out as the game goes by. Each round, there's going to be a starting player, and then everyone's going to take a turn, and after everyone has taken a turn, there is a redevelopment phase. On a player's turn, there's six different actions that you can do. One of them is to build a building. When you build a building, you're simply going to discard a card or adjacent cards, and then put out a building as long as you are legally allowed to. So for example, I have 11 and 28, and so I'm going to build a level two business in this space. Spot. Now I'm going to look at my reference sheet here. A level two business gives me six points, plus one if it's next to a park. No parks. Minus two if next to a factory. No factories. Plus one if in the city center. Well, this matters. So every space, if it's touching the outside, is considered on the outskirts. Any space that's not touching the outside is in the city center. And lo and behold, neither one of these spaces is, so it is in the city center, so I get an extra point. And it's times two if next to a streetcar line, it's not. So this is simply going to give me seven points, which I would then mark on the scoreboard over here. Now there are a lot of different buildings that can be built. And you can see the huge pile of buildings that are able to be played in this game. Now many of the buildings are going to be residences, which give bonus points when they're built on the outside. But there are also special buildings that can be built. None of these special buildings can be built until the city hall has been built. At the beginning of the game, the city hall is worth zero points, but each round it goes up a point, and eventually someone's going to want to build the city hall. Once the city hall has been built, a whole pile of other things can be built. Uh, cinema, for example, uh, which can be placed between two residences. And so if you build it here, for example, it's between two residences, and that will score five points, but it's double of next to a streetcar line and double if next to the uh, city hall. So actually, this would have been a much better place to put it because then it would score 10 points. There's also a uh, post office, which needs to be between a business and a residential area. And then there is the bank, which needs to be next to two different businesses that are on the board. And you can also build levels one, two, and three of the residences and businesses. A church is 15 points, but it's trickier to build the only way you can build a church is it has to go on a double number, like 22, 33, 44, and it has to be the last spot open. Every other spot has to be filled. A shopping center is even trickier. It needs to be next to a residence, a business, a special building, one of these other ones, and the streetcar line. You pull that off. Um, so let's say, for example, I have it set up like this, and the streetcar line is here. I would then be able to build that there because next to one, two, three, streetcar line, and that is worth 30 points. Speaking of the streetcar line, 
Any player can do it once the City Hall has been built. You can build the first one anywhere you want. After that, players can build two, extending the line in either direction. It can even go on the outside of the board. And usually what it does is it doubles the points of buildings that are built next to it. Players also might have a card in their hand that shows a park or factory. These you don't need the specific numbers to put on the board. You can put them anywhere. So I could put a factory there. I could put a park here. Um, there are some other restrictions to how these go on the board. Uh, they're going to cause extra points and minus points for things next to, but they also will cancel out numbers. And at the beginning of your turn, if you have a number in your hand that's been covered up by one of those, you can discard those numbers. And then at the end of your turn, you'll draw back up to five. Speaking of drawing, that's another action players can take where they can discard cards from their hand. They'll just take the cards and stick them on the bottom of the pile that they match. And then you can draw from other piles, although the most you can take from a pile is two. At the end of your turn, you will always draw up to five, depending on what cards you play. But at that point, you can only draw at least one card from each pile. You can draw cards from piles in neighborhoods that aren't put on the board yet trying to get ahead because another action players can take is they can take a new neighborhood and put it on the table. As long as it touches at least two other properties that are already out there, it's legal to put in a play. And of course, you're going to try to put one in play where the numbers match so you can put more buildings out. Now, after players have taken one of their actions, by the way, one of the actions is just pass. Uh, then there is an exchange phase, or it's called a redevelopment phase. We're starting with the person with the most points. You're going to play one or two cards face up or face down, and every other player will then play the cards. And then whoever plays cards face up and has the lowest score will get to choose another player's card, not their own, to add to their hand uh, for each card that they've put out. And then the face down people, after the face up people have picked, will do the same thing. If no one picks your cards and you have no cards left from other people to choose, you get to put your cards back in your hand. So you can't really hoard cards because this will force you to give cards to other people. The starting player then passes and we go to the next round and we keep going until every neighborhood is out and all the properties of buildings on them or till all the players pass or exchange cards in a row consecutively. The player with the highest score is the winner of the game. So the game comes with another box inside which holds the miniatures, and we'll take a look at that in a second. It comes with this, and this is actually a pretty nice reference board. It shows you all the points, then says until the city hall is built, you can't go below this line. All right, fine. And on the other side, it has this. It does do that thing that irritates me where they put the extra stuff on here, which if you don't have, you just look at it and go, oh, well, I'm glad I don't have that. But these are big. I think they could have condensed these a little smaller because the sheet this big is kind of a pain. I know nowadays everything needs to match the size of the box, but sometimes smaller reference sheets are fine. The scoreboard is boring as all get out. These are fine. The boards themselves, they're nice thick tiles. The cards are okay for, again, a deluxe edition. I thought they could have done better quality on these, especially since these are going to get shuffled. They're a little slippery, and considering you're constantly putting cards underneath them, I found them not to be as easy to, to move around as much. And they also have all the same background. Why not make the background different on the different colors? It might have been easier to switch them out and also would have helped with colorblind stuff. So I'm not so impressed with that stuff. But let's take a look at the actual miniatures themselves. So they come in this box and they come in these really nice foam core things. The problem is getting them out is a bear. And you need them all on the table because you need to be able to look at them and see how many is left of each thing. Now these are really solid plastic pieces. That's great. The problem that I have with them is they're really blocky. You would think for a deluxe edition, there'd be a little bit more detail in them. And I'm not a super critic when it comes to miniatures, but these feel like, I don't know, like very generic. And I get that they wanted to make all the special buildings the same color for purposes of being able to tell if something's a special building, but they kind of blur together. The church one's a little easier to tell apart than the, than the other ones but they just don't look that different on the board itself. And even the, the commercial ones, I mean, that's a cool building, but I don't know, it just seems to be lacking something. It just seems like a very quick, they almost feel a bit prototypey. 
This is a very light game, in essence, to what you might think. It looks like a big, grandiose game. It looks fantastic, uh, has these cool pieces, and so, I'm maybe a little harsher than you might think on these pieces. I mean, it's PVC. There's not many games that come with plastic where I can really throw it on the ground and I know that that piece is fine. I just kind of wish it looked a little nicer. And in fact, and this is, might be anathema to some people, I might, if I had my choice between the new big deluxe version and the older version, I think I like the older version the way it looked a little bit better. It wasn't that great, but I don't know, the PVC stuff is, is okay. I mean, again, this game doesn't need miniatures. And that is where the crux of this comes down for me. It's because I do recommend this game. I think Big City is a really fun game. But it is the closest to me not recommending a game I've done in a long time. It's like right on the line. I think it's really fun. But it's hard for me to justify you paying 100 bucks or whatever this costs for this game. That's really pricey for a game that doesn't look necessarily like it's worth 100 bucks. It's cool. And you can let your kids play with these miniatures. But, eh. And the couple rules changes that they made from the original to this one, I don't know. And the original one, the streetcar line could be branching. You could branch off the streetcar line. And I read about the justification as to why they changed it, and I get it. But sometimes the streetcar line in this game is just not that interesting because it dead ends and no one wants to extend it or do anything with it because it doesn't go near where they would want to build properties. So there's that. The, my bigger problem with the game is that redistribution phase at the end where you switch the cards out. Now this is meant to keep people from hoarding cards. <sighs> but it is so much of a drag to me in the game. It just feels like an extra fiddly phase that you add on at the end of every round. Everyone's like, action, 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 boom, 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 boom. Take cards, do this, and then stop. All right, put out some cards, put out some cards, trade some cards. Okay, action, 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 action. And it's, I get it, I just wish it happened less often. And I'm almost, I'm this close to house ruling not doing it at all. Because I get that you could hoard it, but I don't know that the people hoarding cards are more annoying than the people who, <laughs> more annoying than the actual redistribution phase. That being said, I really like every other aspect of the game. I like the actions you can take. You can put out residences and businesses and special buildings and try to set things up. And if you want to build those cool buildings, you got to set them up, except your opponents can see you setting up. You can pull cards off a of stack eight, hoping to put out eight later on as a neighborhood. You put out the neighborhood and connect it, and then suddenly you can build really big, cool buildings. Putting out that streetcar line, having the city hall go from zero to five is a really good move. That's a nice change they did, where it was, it's not worth anything, but as time goes by, you, you want to get that city hall out there because you want to build the special buildings. You want to play the park card and factory cards from your hand. And there's, so there's a little bit of take that in this game. There's definitely a lot of interaction, especially with that redistribution phase. There's even more player action, and I might be a small number of people who doesn't necessarily like that phase of the game. But the rest of it feels pretty fresh. I mean, it's, there's, there's parts of this game that feel a little dated. And when I first replayed this, I was like, oh yeah, this is kind of an older game. But as I've been testing it and messing around with it more, I realized that it's a game that I, I like. It, it's fun. It just feels different. And as much as I say it could have been a tile laying game, the 3D buildings do give it a good city look, and when you're done, it looks cool on the table. Lots of buildings all over the place. Still not 100% sure that justifies the, the tag, the cost of the game. Um, and there are a lot of city building games out there, but this one is pretty neat. So my caveat is here, I think it's good, and you should get it if you can swing that price point. And if you like playing with big, chunky buildings, then don't even hesitate. You'll love this. And underneath it's a pretty simple game, a game that almost anybody easily could learn. It's not a heavy game with some good options and a fun time. Dice Tower Judgment approved.